Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Bahrain Now. With me, your host, Bara Abdullah. We'll be covering the latest trends, happenings, and activities right here in the beautiful country of Bahrain. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Express Middle East has launched its first ever Shop Small initiative in Bahrain to support local businesses at this vital time. Shop Small is designed to build partnerships and support the small business community through encouraging customers to consider shopping with more local businesses for their next purchase. To speak more about that, we have here with us is the CEO of American Express Middle East, Mr. Mazen Khouri. And Mr. Mazen, how are you this evening? I'm very good, thank you. Amazing. I mean, you colored Bahrain with the campaign. Shop Small is like everywhere, you know? I still remember the logos, the colors and everything. Tell us more about that, if you don't mind. Indeed, thank you, Barak, for having me on the show. Most definitely. Um, let me start by giving a bit of background about Shop Small. Um, American Express historically has has been supporting uh, small businesses for a very, uh, very long time, mm. and um, we believe that small businesses are at the core of every thriving. Uh, mm -hmm. neighborhood. So the idea actually started um, around the recession period in 2010 when American Express in the United States uh, launched uh, an initiative called Small Business Saturday. Mm. In essence what it is, it's the Saturday right after Thanksgiving and oh. the objective was to bring more uh, holiday shopping to small businesses. So okay. the idea grew, it became much bigger and today American Express uh, leads this global uh, movement of supporting and uh, small businesses around the globe. Actually, mm. in 2020, American Express spent around $200 million in supporting wow. uh, small businesses. Now, bringing this uh, uh, back home here to, to, to Bahrain, right. um, as you know, with the pandemic, many businesses uh, um, face some difficulties and challenges, but mm. specifically um, uh, small businesses. So what we wanted to do at American Express, given that we are uh, present in Bahrain for 45 years, right. and we've, we've been an active participant in the community, we wanted to create a movement that supports small businesses, small merchants, mm. and to let everybody know the valuable contributions that small businesses bring to the community and as well to the economy. So we launched the campaign called Shop Small, uh, which basically incentivized American Express card members to go and use their cards at, uh, at these small merchants. Right. We obviously incentivized these card members to use their uh, cards there. We had about 400 uh, participating uh, merchants. Wow. Uh, these merchants were uh, given a variety and a host of uh, um, resources mm. um, like online, digital, uh, marketing support, promotional okay. support, um, etc. That's amazing. That is just Thank beautiful. You. I mean, you got resources, you got your marketing campaign, all of that to support small businesses. Um, that's amazing. I mean, just like seeing what's been going on. And like we saw the billboards, like it took us a second, like, hmm, shop small, what's going on? So we went online, we've been reading about it. And now telling us the, you know, the story behind it, it's like, wow, <laughs> it's just, it is a beautiful initiative, a beautiful one. So how did the small businesses get involved? You said 400, which is a big number. Yeah, well, our, our merchants were invited uh, to join the program. So we obviously detailed what the program is all about. They were invited. Those that agreed to participate, uh, we actually pinned mm. their location on a specifically designed and developed map so that okay. our American Express card members can easily locate them in their own neighborhood. Okay. Um, participating merchants were also given the opportunity to brand their their front stores no with details yeah. and the mechanics of the campaign. So actually, visiting card members can actually tell that they are part um, of, of of this uh, particular campaign. And I must say here that we are uh, we're we're not we're open to all kinds of uh, of merchants from all mm. sectors, whether it is a retail shop or a restaurant or a cafe or a pet shop or a clinic. Um, you know any merchants who are interested in welcoming the American Express card, they're uh, encouraged to visit the American Express website or to email us on ms.bahrain at americanexpress.com.bh. So they were invited, those that engaged, they were given the opportunity to, 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 uh, to promote themselves mm. uh, so that card members can, can uh, identify them and, and learn that they can benefit from the special offer. 
I'm still just mesmerized with the thought of how amazing the campaign was. Thank you know, you. the resources and all of that. Not only it helped the small businesses, but even helped consumers understand their role in the entire ecosystem. So now there are benefits that you pretty much mentioned for the small businesses, but what about for the consumers? Card members, America's Best card members were incentivized so, okay. uh, and encouraged to use their cards at participating merchants. So we gave back two BD for every five BD That's spent amazing. at a participating merchant. Right. But I want to go back to the merchants and say right. something. Our core um, uh, objective, a number one objective, was to let uh, the community know the valuable contributions that these uh, small merchants bring uh, mm. to the economy. And as well to encourage card members to shop uh, 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 locally. Right. Um, you'll be surprised that some of the participants uh, of small merchants were America's Best Card members themselves because they owned <laughs> small businesses as well. Wow. Or they actually referred their friends and relatives who, right. who were uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, part of the campaign. Uh, actually, uh, one of the merchants whose uh, name is the Red Croissant Bakery my favorite was place, I love that place. <laughs> <laughs> which was founded, which is a local family business yeah. uh, founded by Mr. Khalil Al Alawiyat, uh, who's an executive chef with over 40 years of experience. Wow. They themselves, Red Cross Home Bakery, saw the benefits of this campaign because it brought them incremental business, new business. Wow. And they are now keen to join future campaigns that American Express will eventually uh, introduce in the future. Actually, personally speaking as well, when I went to their branches and I saw the campaign over there, that even got me more interested, like what's really going on? Yeah. So men you mentioning this example right now, I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense actually. But the thing is, as you build this platform for everybody just to participate, to help the economy, to help the small businesses, and everybody knew what the ecosystem is all about, they come together as a consumer, as a merchant, and they came together just to say, you know what, let's support each other. Exactly. Through your platform, exactly. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I, I would add one more thing as well that, you know, you asked about the the benefits for for uh, customers. Well, right. one of one of the key benefits, other than the fact that um, uh, we incentivize them, some card members started to uh, dine or shop at places mm. that they never visited before within their, within their neighborhood. So, for the small merchant, it was new business. It was new traffic huh. that otherwise would not have come to them. Right. So we see it as more of a win-win for the small merchant and as well for the card member, but in large is to benefit the, the overall community and demonstrate the strong uh, value and contribution that these um, small businesses bring to the community. Amazing, amazing. So I can only say that the reception was amazing, right? People just loved what's going on. They discovered new places. They saw new things going on here and there. So from your perspective for this first edition, how was the, pretty much your evaluation of what was happening here in the ecosystem? Was it challenging a bit? Was it like well received? How did you see it? We, we saw, we, basically it was very well received. There are mm. obviously uh, learnings and uh, given that we are committed to this, we are very enthusiastic about relaunching this in other countries. We wow. chose Bahrain uh, given that we are uh, present in Bahrain for 45 years, but we yeah. plan now to, uh, we're very enthusiastic about relaunching this in other parts of the Middle East as well and obviously lo launching it uh, in, in Bahrain, but overall um, we're very, very pleased with the results. But then the merchants have told us that they have seen incremental additional business that they did Love not that. see in the past, uh, which was great. And the point I made about, you know, car members visiting or shopping or dining at places that they haven't uh, been before. I should give it a try myself. Yeah. It's like put a plan for this year. I'm going to have all of that pretty much consumed and make it happen and visit different places. I think you just make life easier for a lot of uh, the card holders altogether. Now, as all that been said, apparently you have a lot coming up in the future. A lot of things planned out, you know, when it comes to the campaign and others. But what about Ramadan? It's approaching. He's knocking his doors. What's happening there? The holy month of Ramadan is around the corner. Um, American Express, we have what we call an offers platform, which is accessible through the mobile app or through our website. We have a host of exclusive offers for our card members provided by our merchants. For the holy month of Ramadan, we actually tweak them and make them more relevant to the shopping and spending needs of, of, the, of the holy month. And we'll be making announcements very soon about the special offers in, in, uh, during the holy month. We will keep a close watch. But again, going back to the campaign of Shop Small, I mean, it did make a difference. We saw what's going on. People were talking about it. Again, the colors, the design, and all of that. In the beginning, we thought like, what's happening here? Is that a conference? Shop small. Then luck, no, it's initiativity. And as we got more involved and read more about it, I'm like, this is pretty cool. We love this. 
So the reception was great and people loved it and the entire system pretty much people got to understand that sometimes just buying is not only just going to a merchant, it's actually not only for the sake of just supporting but you're actually being part of the system itself. Well, with that being said, any last words, sir, you would like to add? Um, American Express, you know, has been operating in Bahrain for 45 years and, you know, we've been part of the community, contributing to uh, the community and supporting, you know, uh, customers and our merchants and adding value to them is very, very important. So with going back with Shop Small, you know, our key and main objective was to demonstrate the value and, and the contributions that small uh, businesses bring mm. to the community. So. As I mentioned, we are very enthusiastic about taking the learnings from Bahrain and relaunching right. Shop Small in other countries around the Middle East and hopefully launching it again in Bahrain. We will continue, uh, I mean, it's a movement that we've created and we right. will continue with this movement. And for our car members, we will continue to encourage them uh, to shop locally because one of the best ways to demonstrate and give back to the community is to shop, uh, shop locally and then right. car members can benefit or enjoy the benefits that come with the uh, American Express card. So it is a movement right. uh, that we would like to continue with uh, and we are committed to it. I love that, love that. Well, Mr. Mazen, this has been a great pleasure having you with us right here in Bahrain now and we can't wait to see what's gonna happen with the future of American Express right here in Bahrain. 45 years, let's go for another 45 years and make that happen. Thank it's you, Barat. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, Barat, thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Keep a close watch on American Express. A lot of exciting things coming up. All that took place right here in an interview on Bahrain Now. Ladies and gentlemen, to a proud moment as the Bahrain Climate Connection Champions Program is designed to develop and amplify support for climate change action and COP26 amongst young people and institutions in Bahrain while building a network of champions across the community. And to speak more about this, we are pleased to have with us here the winners of the Bahrain Climate Connection Champions. We have the Waterji Project Technical Team Leader, Mohamed Fatid, the team member, Faraz Al-Qatami, and team mentor, Dr. Sakhar Al-Najdawi. Well, congratulations, gentlemen. How Thank are you. you this evening? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We are good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Really proud to Thank see this, you. and I can see that right now over there <laughs> with the achievement. And a lot took place with climate change. It's pretty much a very big topic. It's getting bigger and bigger, and reaching to a point it's becoming even more realistic with what we really want to do. So, starting with you, Mohammed, what is the project? So basically, our project is consists of two main parts: water collection and uh, solar system. We collect the water from the condensation in the ACs. Oh, wow. We collect it in the tank. We use the solar energy to pump the water through the house. Uh, for the first application, we already designed like a small uh, drip irrigation system. We can irrigate the whole uh, plants in the home. We, we, there is also a pressurized uh, sprayer. Wow. We can use it to uh, clean the surrounding premises of the house also, or maybe if the kids came from outside, they can wash their okay. bicycle, their toys. Really? The water. Yeah. That's it. Love it. Yes. Love it. I mean, the and project. It's yes, big. it's one with zero emission because it's running on solar energy. Plus the, the power bank uh, or the battery, it has enough juice to be used to charge your mobile device or tablet or even in case of emergencies, we can use it like a backup power to just to run a small fan and lights. That is a life-saving, life-changing project altogether. It just like, it just changed a lot of things here. Just the idea itself is just brilliant, yes. phenomenal. I mean, no wonder you won, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Well, congratulations again for that. Thank and you. now, Mohammed, thank you so much for that. The project is phenomenal, it's big. Now, as doctor, you've been part of this team, you know, amazing team right here. As a mentor, tell us more about that. Okay, at the beginning, uh, I want to uh, send thanks to all uh, WaterG team members 
the beginning was after the uh, workshops presented by the British Council in October 2021 uh, by forming a team uh, yani consists of students from different universities, different uh, disciplines. Uh, the first uh, challenge that faced me is how to create uh, a harmony between students mm. uh, to work on the project's idea. Uh, I identified uh, the three dimensions to work on it, uh, theoretical, uh, marketing and uh, technical work. Mm. The strategy was to divide the students into three teams, sub-teams. Okay. Uh, these sub-teams, the first sub-team uh, is the theoretical team who's uh, yani, uh, led by uh, Aisha Al-Madani. Mm. Uh, they are responsible to do the paperwork. The second team is the media team. Uh, they are uh, led by uh, Rashid Al Bin Zayed. Mm -hmm. They are responsible to do the marketing for the project using social media. And mm -hmm. the third one is the technical team, led by Muhammad Abdul Rasul. Uh, they are responsible to apply the project on the ground. So that I made uh, some, and uh, I do uh, a lot of uh, meetings with the students. Uh, these meetings, virtual and uh, physical meetings, to make collaboration between students and uh, to brainstorming and mm. to do, uh, uh, يعني, to, to help each other. Love that, love that, and it's a lot of work. I'm sure you've been through a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Like very much. sleepless nights, possibly even. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes <laughs> I'm sure of it. I'm sure for the things you told me, it's like three teams and committees, yeah. and everybody has his own, uh, you know, leadership going on and mm -hmm. led by different people. So you were actually have to go between three teams and see yeah. what's happening. So as exciting as it may seem and sound like, but I'm sure it's a lot of work. So Thank you were the man for the job. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, much appreciated. Going to Paris, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Amazing, man. So thank you. young generation, right? Yes. <laughs> so now, as you've been part of this really amazing project that you know comes with an amazing purpose for climate change mm -hmm. and comes with a, a life change, I would say, aspect to it. Now, from your perspective, how has the reception been, you know, with this generation in Bahrain's uh, in this regard? Well, I think that countries realize that if they want a sustainable future. They need to educate the young and make sure that they are ready for when they are take the leadership roles in Bahrain or any, any, culture, any other country. So what's happening right now, especially in Bahrain as well, is that not just the government, but organizations and companies are trying to prepare the young and educate them about mm. climate change and how the world will be in the future. Right. So something that Bahrain is doing right now is that they're presenting events and competitions and any mm. other social or virtual event for students, not just students, any, uh, anybody in Bahrain so that they get educated about climate change. And they know that in probably 20 to 30 years, they, are, they realize that the young generation of now will be leading Bahrain in the leadership roles. Right. They'll have responsibilities that they need to take care of. And uh, I believe that not just, not just the government is doing that, but as I said, organizations such as the British Council and uh, c companies in Bahrain. So I think that, for example, from my perspective, mm. my university has provided me with many opportunities to uh, educate myself and become more of an expert, not just in climate change, but with social skills, soft skills, communication skills. So I think that's important. So the American University of Bahrain, my university, has provided me with lots of opportunities for me to grow as a student and to be prepared for the workplace. And that, I think that's amazing. And that applies to the other universities as well. Very well versed, if I may say, pretty much. I can say right now we are in good hands. If you are the future, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Mm. Thank you so much for the answer. I mean, and yes, the American University of Bahrain, they have a lot of initiatives going mm -hmm. on nonstop. So I can definitely tell this has been an amazing opportunity for all. Mm -hmm. Now, if I will go back to Mohammed, mm. now, as you explained the project beautifully, and I'm still like thinking about what you said, but the whole thing, condensed water and with the solar energy and see what's happening with the ACs and all of that. Yes. Now, there's a lot of times when you have projects like these, right? Yes. They look great on paper. And you know, when you have the prototype yes. and all looks good and you present it, you win and all of this. Yes. But realistically speaking, can this be done or used on a daily basis? Yes, I'm totally sure that this kind of project can be used as a daily use because uh, 
Every house uh, around Bahrain, they have two main needs to be able to live in it, water and electricity. So making a project that will utilize these both uh, resources mm. definitely will be in use as a daily user. I would love the fact that I mean, hopefully like right now there's yeah. like an investor listening to this. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Here's a check. Let's go. Let's start <laughs> tomorrow, like right? Yes. Pretty much. I can see this happening. Yes. I would love to see this happen actually. Mm -hmm. And but don't forget about us, right? You know, you know, <laughs> you know we just did this interview, you know, <laughs> it's like maybe we are the reason for this to happen. You never <laughs> know, right? Yeah, but super sure. excited and super proud to actually have this talk, honestly, mm -hmm. to hear that we have such initiatives taking place. Yes. Now, for that being said, what do you think of the awareness, doctor, that's taking place right here in Bahrain? As a faculty member at uh, Applied Science University uh, and the daily interaction with the students, I found that the uh, young generation on Bahrain have a high level of awareness on the environmental issues and climate change. This appears from the uh, applying the projects uh, which prevent the, the uh, carbon footprint by mm -hmm. using solar, uh, solar panels and the, the, the clean, uh, yani the clean uh, kind of uh, energy mm -hmm. and uh, like this. Uh, it's, yani I see it's, uh, the society as all in Bahrain are yani going forward in the using the renewable energy. Right, right. So that uh, the, the, the level of uh, awareness in Bahrain the society is high now. It is getting higher and higher. I mean, it took us a while, I guess, right here in Bahrain, but the moment it picked up, it became more like common sense that it's not something we do because it's a trend or it's a hype. Yeah. It's definitely a way we want to live with right mm -hmm. now. It cuts it cut costs, it brings yeah. more initiatives, innovations, creativity, and all of that. So you're absolutely right. We are right now at a very good high level of awareness mm -hmm. when it comes to climate change and renewable energy, like you said mm -hmm. and mentioned, Doctor. Mm -hmm. So, Fadas, now, if I would ask you right now, what's the future like? Any plans? Oh, just, you know, we just won and we're happy and that's mm -hmm. it. We're going to remember this day for the rest of our lives or there's something more coming up? Well, just like any other engineering product or project, there is always room for improvement and improving the product and improving the project. That goes for any product in the market. And I think that over time, what our aim and goal is, is that for this project to be applied on a wide scale. Uh, as, we, as I said in the presentation uh, of the, in the competition, we want this project to be applied in a large city or a large project because right now we have one, po one portable and modular product that's applied in one house. But the goal is not just to have this project in one house. We want it to be applied across a large area because if we have benefits from applying the project in one area, imagine the benefit if we apply it to a larger area. Exactly. For example, as a, a city. Right. And I think that the benefits would uh, the benefits would come to the community instead of just having it in one house. And uh, of course, uh, we could improve the product with time, make it more efficient, maybe uh, make it cheaper. Hopefully, because as you know, if you make things in bulk, they become cheaper. True. And I think that. Over time, uh, hopefully our goal is for this project to, to be a wide release proje project or product to be applied in Bahrain and outside of Bahrain, hopefully. Let's make this happen. You know, I'm just too excited right now just to hear this because I know it's doable, right? Yeah. But it's just like, you know, like you said yourself, we just want to see the opportunities and knock on different doors. You never know how this will go. Like you said, you know, in bulk production made in Bahrain, that is definitely a beautiful thing to look up to and look forward to as well. Yes. Well, gentlemen, if you would like right now to give me your last words before we end this very exciting talk, starting with you, Doctor. Yeah, I want to take this opportunity to send a special thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, uh, the first supporter for the youth in uh, Bahrain, and uh, Sheikh Dr. Rana bin Isa Al Khalifa for supporting the students in the higher education sector and uh, many thanks to uh, Professor Wahib Al Khaja, Professor Hassan Awad and Dr. Muhammad Yusuf and all the uh, ASU, uh, ASU uh, members uh, for uh, endless support for the student and uh, thank you for kind invitation Most today. Most definitely. We're super proud to have you here. Muhammad. Yes. yes. Uh, for me, I would like to have a chance to thank uh, our president for our university, Dr. Hassan Al-Mullah, for creating this opportunity 
for me and for all my colleagues in the university by expanding our horizon with uh, extensive uh, method of education. Uh, we have a lot of uh, seminars, webinars all around the courses, all around the year. And special thanks to Dr. Dalal al -Awad. She, the one she inspired me to attend such an event and invited me to it. Most definitely beautiful. Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank the, my university, the American University of Bahrain, for providing me with this opportunity, as well as the Higher Education Council and the British Council. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Dr. Marwan Hamid for uh, coming and asking me if I'd like to be part of this event, and I'm happy that I took the opportunity. I'm really happy you did. I'm really happy you all together came together as a team through all these workshops by the British Council and you actually met to make this happen and coming up with such a life-changing, I would say, project that can actually save a lot of people. So thank you so much for making this happen and it's been a great honor having you right here on Bahrain Now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Most yeah. definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you saw it for yourself. The future is definitely going to be cleaner and more sustainable. All that with ideas by people like Mohammed Faris and Dr. Sakhar, who took place right here in an interview on Bahrain Now. Well, everyone, we have reached to the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. So don't forget to reach us out on our social media accounts shown below for the latest happenings with Bahrain Now. I'm Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.